Good evening, students. Have you ever heard the saying, a picture is worth a thousand words? Well, tonight we're going to be drawing some pictures to help us with our math. I don't know if they're going to be worth exactly a thousand words, but these pictures will help us represent fractions and help us understand them a little better. Before we can start drawing pictures, we need to make sure you remember that a fraction can only be re represented when the whole is divided into equal parts. So if we were to see the fraction 1 fourth, we would look at the denominator and say we need to divide a whole into four parts to show 1 fourth. We're going to start by drawing a rectangle and I'm going to tell you another little trick about drawing fractions. When the denominator is an even number, then it's appropriate to divide your shape, no matter what it is, right down the middle at first. Right now I have two parts and I need four, so I can divide each of those down the middle as best I can, and then shade in one of those four parts. There we have it. Voila! One-fourth. When the denominator is an odd number, then it's a little bit more difficult to draw, but we can still give it our best shot. Let's draw a rectangle again. And because our denominator is an odd number, we cannot divide it right down the middle because it will just continue to make even numbers every time we divide up each set. So we're going to have to go off center just a slight little bit. I would suggest using a pencil because you may need to be erasing. Right now we have three parts and they're definitely not equal in size. But if we divide these again, not perfect, but not bad. Now we will shade one fifth. And if we try and make these two rectangular boxes about the same, we can see e easily that one-fifth is smaller than one-fourth. Oh, by the way, the secret password tonight is fraction. Because we're drawing pictures of fractions, please write fraction at the top of your paper for full credit tonight. Now, what would happen if you're asked to show your fractions by a picture that was a circle? Does that make it trickier? Sometimes it does, but we still want to use the same rule. If the denominator is even, we will divide it right in half. So if we want, if we're asked to draw a circle that represents one-fourth, we would start by dividing the circle right in half. Now we have two pretty equal parts, and we need four, so we're going to go there again. And then we will color in one of those four parts. Let's see, circles and fifths. That's going to be a little trickier. First draw a circle, and now we're going to divide it into one-fifth. Definitely can't go right down the middle. That'll always leave me with even parts. So I'm going to start in the middle and go straight up. I'm going to use my knowledge of what I know over here, that one-fifth is a little smaller than one-fourth, and I'm going to give this a try. One, two, three, four, five. Not exact, but not bad. One, two, three, four, five parts, and I am going to be coloring in one of the five parts. So the things I want you to remember most tonight is that when considering fractions, every single piece needs to be of equal size, equal parts, in order for the whole to truly represent fractions when it's divided up. Secondly, if the denominator is even, start by drawing a line right down the middle. If the denominator is odd, you better not go down the middle. You better do a little estimating and guesstimating. Make sure that you have that pencil with an eraser ready. Tonight, your homework is Saxon Lesson 26, Lesson Practice on page 159. You're going to be doing A through E, and afterwards, 
written practice number one through 30. Have a good night. See you tomorrow.